All right now, every morning about this time, we'd like to learn a little bit, a little bit about what happened here in the state of Iowa on this day in Iowa history, and that uh, being that today is Newspaper Carriers Day, Michelle. Uh, Very you know, timely story. We were just wondering whether or not how many newspaper carriers there were still out there. Uh, we don't know about that, but they have changed a lot. Uh, they have gotten smaller. There are fewer and fewer editorial cartoons in the paper, uh, but uh, the most famous one was actually in Iowan when it comes to things like that, Professor. Mr. Stein, how are you this morning? I'm doing very well. We could say that this segment is a little sketchy today. Oh, but oh, I like yes, it. He'll I be like here it. all week. Enjoy <laughs> the deal. All right. <laughs> and every segment is sketchy, come to think of it, I suppose, too. <laughs> but but this, the serious point you mentioned, if you think back to when some of us were younger, you pick up the newspaper and sometimes if it was the register, right on the front page, an editorial cartoon. Right. Not many newspapers did that on the front page. Register was one of those. And it influenced a lot of folks in the state of Iowa. Perhaps a fellow by the name of Paul Conrad was influenced by that. During his five-decade-long career, cartoonist Paul Conrad provided comment on 11 presidential administrations. His work for the Los Angeles Times even landed him on President Nixon's enemies list <laughs> in the aftermath of Watergate. Let's roll it back a little before that, though. Paul and his twin brother James were born in Cedar Rapids on June 27th of 1924. Now, he was actually left-handed, but forced by teachers to use his right hand. That was not uncommon at the time, because they just assumed everyone should be right-handed. So when you consider that, it's truly amazing what he did with that right hand, not his natural gift. He first showed a flair for art by drawing on the bathroom wall of his elementary school <laughs> in Des Moines. Now, no doubt they scrubbed that down. They may wish they had left that mural because it could be worth something yeah, today. Yeah, think of the one. Would that be worth today if someone would have a hunk of that? That's yeah. right. I encourage writing on the walls. <laughs> they, they put a frame around it yeah. these days. Exactly. And all of it. Well, his uh, Paul Conrad's role model was the legendary Des Moines Register editorial cartoonist and natural uh, naturist, uh, conservationist, Ding Darling. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, and that was part of that uh, century-long tradition of Register cartoonists, from Ding Darling to uh, Frank Miller right. to Brian Duffy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Duffy's yeah, still creating, than, yeah. More than a century of front-page cartoons. Well, after service in World War II, Paul Conrad enrolled at the University of Iowa. That was in 1946, and he started drawing cartoons for the Daily Iowa. He graduated from the university in 1950 and spent the next 14 years at the Denver Post. That's a pretty good job right out of school. Good gig, earned, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some of us are thinking, well, he went to the, okay, that's pretty good. Where did I go? Well, in any case, Paul Conrad earned his first Pulitzer Prize in 1964. And around that time, his work began to be syndicated around the country. And that's when you really know you made it in this industry is when you get syndicated like that, meaning that people around the country can see your work the same way you do for your local paper, for example, in this case, elsewhere in the country. Yeah, you're still based at that uh, local paper, as right. you say, but then it is in hundreds of papers around the country. Jack Bender of Waterloo was the same way. Right. Well, Paul Conrad, Pulitzer Prize in hand, moved to the Los Angeles Times that same year, 1964. The L.A. Times, really at the height of its glory, and he offered cartoon commentary on the important political events of the time for the L.A. Times, picking up another two Pulitzers during his 30 years there. Three Pulitzers in all in about a three and a half decade period. When Paul Conrad died in California at the age of 84, he was universally regarded as one of the finest political cartoonists of the whole 20th century. Iowa-born Paul Conrad, and we salute him on this date because this is the date that he left us. He passed away on this date nine years ago. Wow. wow. Yeah, speaking of story. cartoonists, I just saw a, a, another great one from uh, Brian Duffy. Uh, yesterday, he still is creating, in case you haven't seen his work lately, uh, I think it's like Duffy Art. Search that on your favorite um, social media platform. You'll be able to find Brian's work, but he is uh, one of the best it's ever been. Yeah, mm -hmm. and if, we, if people want to learn more about this story and a lot of the others that you feature here on Iowa Live, where can they do that? If you go to iowaalmanac.com, no sketches, no drawings, but plenty of information, iowaalmanac.com. Also, Twitter and Instagram, 
at Iowa Almanac. I think now you need to sketch something. I have a feeling okay. you have some sketch yeah. talent in you. I tried, and I found that I have limited talent, and drawing recognizable figures was not <laughs> one of them. It's, it's very subjective, you know, so somebody out there might find it beautiful. Stick figure they, politics. They'd all be stick figures yeah. with a little arrow. <laughs> I'd draw a stick figure and it would say Lou and there'd be an arrow. That's as good and as lots of words explaining going, what this drawing is all going about. Going right, right through my head, right? <laughs> Perfect. Okay. All right, Professor, thank you so thank much. You. And Have we'll check in day. tomorrow and learn something else that happened on this day in Iowa history with the Iowa Almanac. Have a great one. You have a great one as well. Thanks, guys. All right, buddy.